Howdy folks, welcome to Living with a Genius. I'm your host, Omar Crook. I'm really excited about this episode. This is the first uh, collaboration between the Los Angeles Opera and my podcast. And in this episode, I had the great pleasure of interviewing stage director and fine actor, Phelan McDermott. He's the director of uh, our current production, Akhenaten, by Philip Glass. We're having a real ball, uh, literally, because we're juggling. Lots of lots of uh, balls on stage. So I hope you guys come out and see it. It's really extraordinary, uh, visually arresting. The music is superb, and the singing is first rate. So anyway, here is my interview with Phelan McDermott. If you'd like to hear the rest of it, please go over to livingwithagenius.com or lwagpod.com if you don't feel like using your fingers so much. Thank you so much for listening. Here's Phelan. In opera, you, as you say, there's a big machine there. There's a right. big orchestra. There's a massive right. chorus. <laughs> yes. They're all looking at you saying, minute what's going to happen? Minute yes. by minute. It's yes. got a, you, you're, the clock's ticking. and you, So you've got to hold your nerve. But you're in parameters. So how do mm -hmm. you uh, communicate to, I mean, the, the glass is a very particular thing. Mm -hmm. How do you communicate to an orb, a, a, a chorus mm -hmm. that we want this to stay alive, even though you're, you've got to get from here to here? And how mm -hmm. do you, so those... I would say, well, what you, I, from my perspective, yeah. you empower us. That's what you do, is you give us some tools, mm. uh, which does create, like you said, a framework. Mm. You have a scaffolding to yeah. work from. You can't jump off of it. Yeah. You have to stay on it. Yeah. But within that, you can yeah. move around. Yeah. And it makes us feel real smart. That's great. Well, and that's so, uh, yeah. it, in that way, it was very successful. Yeah. I mean, I, I was thinking about this this morning because. Some people think improvisation means you've got to do everything differently every night. Right. And I think that's sort of true. But I would say that there are different levels at which that exploration can happen. Mm -hmm. Externally, it could be that you do totally different gestures every night. Mm -hmm. Internally, it could be that you explore totally different emotions every right. time you sing that, you that same bit mm -hmm. of, a, of, of an aria. Mm -hmm. Or it could be that you do the same movement, but on a on a different level, you explore how it feels in the sensations mm -hmm. in your body, mm -hmm. feels differently. And I got the image this morning of, you know the kind of Mandelbrot thing where they look at the edge of a coastline mm -hmm. and then they home in and it's smaller and it right. looks like another coastline and then you go smaller and you go. I think right. that in this kind of context, that's the kind of improvisation you're talking about, mm -hmm. which is you go, I'm doing this same gesture every night. Of course, how's that different? And the answer is that you go more detailed. Right. You go deeper. You go more kind of like internal. And you go, what? I'm having different a different image is coming from this right. sensation tonight. So it stays alive moment to moment to moment. That's the kind of, I mean, that's kind of fast food version of the different kind of vocabulary. Right. The improvisation can bring to something that, you know, there's some big pieces of machinery out there that you've got to avoid. Right. And you've, as you say, you're not going to fall off them. Right. You're not going to get hit by them. Mm -hmm. So you can't just do a chaotic thing. Right. It has to have context. It has to have context mm -hmm. and it has to, as you say, scaffolding. Mm -hmm. But within that context, there is an amazing amount of depth yes. to explore. Well, I use your cheat cards. I mean, it's the first time we've had a director come in with the with the different uh, emotions written. Yes. And so for the final scene of Akhenaten, where he's passing away, I hope I don't spoil it, but he dies at the end. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> uh, you know, and so I, I've been playing with that. When, when I'll shift from one moment to the next, I'll be snobbish yeah. and I'll be pious. I'll be angry. Yeah. I'll be yeah. frightened. Yeah. Uh, and it really is keeps it alive. It really yeah. does. Yeah. And really also, does. what I think about those cards is interesting: is that you think there'll be something that you can't make sense of or justify. You do, very and then you quickly. go, "Oh wow, that that can make the sense in that moment." You just have to be a different character. Yeah, it's and, called and acting. Yes, it's called acting. <laughs> yeah. And it also it keeps it interesting for yeah. you each night, and it's a, it is a different night. And mm -hmm. even though you're doing the same movement, yeah, yeah, you aren't doing the same movement. Right. You're right. doing it. The movement this moment tonight right now let's talk about Akhenaten when uh, how did you come to 
accept the job of doing it the first time? How did that come about? Uh, Act Norton? Yeah. Well, at ENO. Uh, is this, it, I don't know if there's time to do this, but the first part of the story was I was asked if I wanted to do Anne's Son on the Beach. And I went, ooh, that's a strange idea. In London? Yeah, mm -hmm. by by the ENO. Uh huh. Were um, you uh, in uh, in house at ENO? No, were you, you weren't. I'd never done an opera before in my life at that point. Okay. And uh, a guy called Sean Doran, who was working at the ENO, running the ENO at that time, mm -hmm. uh, said, "Do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, that's a crazy idea." Yeah, what said, a well, way do you want to meet Philip Glass? And I said, "Oh yeah, I'll be in New York because I'll be performing our show. We were performing our show Spirit at the New York Theatre Workshop from your company, from my, our company, Improbable." Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that. Philip Glass lives over the road from the New York Theatre Workshop. It's kind of just nearby there. Okay. I said, well, I'll meet Philip Glass. Yeah. And, uh, and I went for a coffee with him, and he said, what do you want to do on Stand on the Beach for? I said, well, I don't. I was no. asked. <laughs> I said, I don't. He said, oh. And we had a conversation. At the end of this conversation, he said, your genuine reluctance to do this piece makes me think you should do it. <laughs> And I said, well, words to live by. Okay, right? well, maybe, uh, but or maybe there's something else. Yeah. And we started talking about Satyagraha, mm -hmm. and about what it was about, and about Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a lot of open space events, our big conferences, D and D, okay. uh, which, on some level, is a big group collaborative force for change. And I right. was like, this is kind of related to what I'm doing elsewhere with mm -hmm. our company. In our, I would say, our kind of the, the strand of activism as it were right um so ended up doing satyagraha and uh never done an opera before in my life D i mean did philip hold, hold your hand through the whole thing or no, how did you, you he, was, just... he, he said i'm not interested in seeing telling you what you should be doing with it i'm wow. interested in you doing what you do with it because if it's going to end up in the canon yeah as an opera mm -hmm. it needs to be able to be reinterpreted again and reimagined again and yeah again. ah okay so he He's wonderful, Philip. He's not interested in saying, we did it like this then and that. Mm. So he came and saw it for the first time. So when he, when he lets it. something go, he really yeah. lets it go. Yeah. Wow. And that's Philip. You know, he's extraordinary. Um, so then and then I worked on um, Perfect American, mm -hmm. which is about Walt Disney. And right. The, the story of the, you know, the positive sides of Walt and the not sometimes not so sure. positive sides of Walt. That was at E&O as well. And that was at E&O and, and Madrid. Oh, uh, that yeah. Teatro Real? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, with nice. Gerard Mortier, who sadly is gone. I love Madrid. Did yeah. you love Madrid? It was extraordinary working That's a great there. Town. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And then uh, there was like, Act Norton came up in the conversation. Mm. I was like, oh, am I going to become the person who just. You're, the, you're Philip, the Philip Glass I'm the guy. the Philip Glass guy. Yeah. And I was like, do I? And then, of course, um, Tom, who I'd just worked with on Cozy, mm -hmm. he said, oh, God, Act Norton's a mate. I was like, okay, I'll go listen and think. And then I went, no, 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 I really have to do this. And I had seen it, of course. I told you a story about seeing Philip in the street. I'd gone right. to see it at the E&O uh -huh. all those years ago. Uh -huh. And that was a famous production because the set was nothing but sand. It was sand, 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 sand everywhere. So the building of the city was built in the sand when it was destroyed. Wow. And there were famously, there were wrestlers down the front of the stage naked wrestling in slow motion yeah the whole thing and it went through that you know so, okay uh i was like oh revisit the thing so a little bit of a beautiful circular story for me yeah. of now directing it having first seen it all those years ago in that amazing david freeman production um so uh we you know that thing where you go, it's far enough away for me to not feel intimidated right, by right. what that... And you didn't was. sit down with Philip Glass and say, I want to have jugglers and... Just, just kind no, of I mean, I, th I think I probably told you this in rehearsal, but my idea for the jugglers, we'd done different vocabularies in the different ones. So the first, Satyagraha was kind of newspaper puppetry. I okay. Mean, people may have seen pictures of the big, you know, big... Yeah, that they make puppets. on stage. Yeah, yeah right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And some of that is made on stage. Some of them were big kind of politicians. I have to admit, I, I did not know that was your production. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's a famous production. Yeah. People so, talk about it here. Yeah. So, and then in the... With Philip's music, you have to find a vocabulary that, that fills this other time zone. Uh-huh. Perfect American, it was animation and the movements of the animators. So he did choreographic movement of... Of um, animation and animation. With the cells, characters. you mean, With as the they're cells, yeah, as, the cells. as you, if you see the yeah. old footage of them doing it, they're flipping the, 
the cells yeah, back and forth. Sure. And got, that looks good to Philip Glass music. Uh, and I was thinking, what's it going to be in Eknarton? You know, does there have to be something? And then I had this moment where I thought, maybe it's juggling. Yeah, who came up with the, who found the hieroglyphic? Well, I was like, maybe it's juggling. That's a really, oh God, that's a really stupid idea. Oh, so that was the genesis. It wasn't yeah. the, it wasn't coming across. Well, this is what happened. I had the idea and thought, that's really stupid. And I knew about Sean's work. But had I you worked with him before? No. no. And I went and looked at stuff and went, Oh no, that looks fantastic with Philip Glass music. Yeah. And then I rang him up and I said, Look, I'm doing this opera. It's Philip Glass music. He said, Oh, we've sometimes used Philip's music. Yeah, for... he said that. Yeah. And and he said, And you do know the first ever picture of juggling is a hieroglyphic. And I said, No. Well, that's and uh he pointed me towards that beautiful picture of the women doing yeah, that's fate. Ju ju yeah. And it, I was like Okay. It may be a stupid idea, but I can't ignore it now. Sold. I've got to do it. Uh, because if you then, if you don't do it, you go, that's a, like an idea that I've really, it won't it's go not away. on my it will not go shoulder. Away. And I, if I turn my back on it, there's something, there's the Tao for you. That's right. So that's what I would I think say. the same way. Taoism is, is you go, if, I'm, if I don't follow this, it involves some courage, but I'm really going to step out of the flow. Yeah. Because it wasn't decided by me. I, yep. I had a stupid idea in the bath. Uh, and the stupid idea said, no, uh, I'm not stupid idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, so uh, always a bit of, in this production, a bit of like, is this a bad idea or not? Oh, and I, I, you got, and it's very beautiful. It's and it's amazing. Yeah, and it's Sean's beautiful. done an extraordinary work on it. And, yeah. uh, it's very challenging for the chorus, I've got to say. Yeah, well, you it's had still, to learn I mean, to juggle. <laughs> I've never felt so stiff on stage yeah. wondering if I'm going to drop this damn ball. Well, well <laughs> and it, it's very, what I love about it is, there is the amazing work that the jug the jugglers right. official jugglers doing, but that combined with the 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 number of you yeah you chorus guys yeah doing simple juggling yes is extraordinary and there's something moving about it. I, I agree. Think. Yeah, I agree. And the the challenge for me the ch I mean I love romantic Italian repertoire. Don't get me wrong, yeah. Puccini and Verdi and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I can do that French repertoire. Mm -hmm. I love it. But it's not very often that we get to step out of that. And mm -hmm. when we do, I feel like we as a group really, really chomp into it. Yeah. And it's been yeah. really, really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, what what does the, I mean, I have an idea of what the juggling means, the actual movement of the balls mm. mean in context mm. uh, and in relation to the story. Uh, is that something that you decided on with Sean? How did you come about? Because I see, I see it as representative of the society, mm -hmm. and of the 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 struggle, and the difference between the pantheistic idea mm -hmm. and the monotheistic idea, mm -hmm. and at the end, uh, the obvious mm -hmm. uh, death of Akhenaten. Did you come? First of all, am I? Is that close to what you thought? And is it something that you collaborated with, or decided on your own, or did Sean bring it to the? I mean, I think work that I enjoy watching. So if you think of like like great documentaries or something if you think about is it um that that thing where people manage to create beautiful rhymes mm -hmm. in their work and mm -hmm. i would say the thing about the juggling is it rhymes with the music yes it, it's a visual has a visual correlation with the 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 structures and the cyclical yes. nature of the music you can see the yeah. composition yeah. in you front can, of you so basically you, can see you, it. you are seeing a kind of like a representation yeah. of the actual composition. On some levels, a scientific representation yes. of it because it involves gravity. Uh -huh. Now, what I, in my short uh, uh, period of working on Philip's operas, mm -hmm. you have to find a language that works on stage. It's it's impossible to not explore the slow. So people go, oh, they've decided to do it slow. You can't not do Philip Glass's work slow. If you do it fast, you're gonna you're in for a long night weirdly right, right. if okay. you do it slow it speeds up okay if you start to oh, do normal naturalistic sure. movement to philip glass's music it doesn't work it sure. doesn't make sense and i've seen some productions of philip glass where people try and do fast movement to philip glass and it looks slightly wrong <laughs> yeah but there are some things that you can do fast and those things that you can do fast are of nature so as we know with Philip's music, those of people who know it, they'll sometimes know it from Koyani Skatsi and sure. those beautiful films. Yeah. 
where you're seeing natural rhythm and natural patterns mm -hmm. so waterfalls mm -hmm. uh, flowers uh, opening flowers uh, mm -hmm. uh, patterns of traffic right speeded up mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it makes total sense with philip's music because it's got something of na nature stroke yes. chaos patterns yes and it's it. relentless yes and it's got cyclical you know mm -hmm. cyclical Momentum. waves mm -hmm. it's got wave patterns scientific wave patterns in mm -hmm. there so whatever vocabulary you try to do that goes into the faster end has to have that kind of language to it so it, it has to be a choreography that takes notice of that and of course juggling and the beautiful patterns mm -hmm. that sean creates with those balls and gravity mm -hmm. totally relate to the music so that they become one now when they become one if they do become one if we're lucky that that happens right the audience are taken into a place where they can dream it's transcendental it's the level of reality so there's a story there about Agnarton on the consensus reality level. He did this. He was he lived from then to then. Yeah. He created this monotheist. Now there's some deeper stories about what that was all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the dreaming level. If you create a thing on stage which allows the people and the music to take people into that dreaming level, you don't just find out the historical facts about Agnarton. You find out about a man who thought the sun was the god. And you, if you're lucky, get a feeling of what that might like might be like yeah. to experience what it would be like in that that time. You're time you're time transported, I think, yeah. to another place by that. And that's I think one of the things that Philip's operas can do. You don't go to see a Philip Glass opera to find out the historical story of Acnarton. You go to Wikipedia for that. That's right. What you, you go to be Yeah, you mm -hmm. go, yes. What you go to the opera is to find out about some of the emotions, right. some of the deeper, more kind of tectonic plate mm -hmm. versions of what that historical thing was. Mm -hmm. um, and in the juggling, I think we've created an image where that kind of sense of the story, of the, 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 the kind of epic, mythical nature of that story which still has, you know, there are some theories that the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. was a, a, an idea that came from Arten, Arten, Eden, you know, was, you know, um, uh, um, Akhenaten and Nefertiti, were they the Adam and Eve of, you know, uh, yeah. you know pre-Moses yeah. of antiquity mm -hmm. that, you know, so this story of a, you know, who knows? The first monotheistic religion. And uh, you, some feeling of time and, you know, we, we get into parallel universes. And if we're lucky, of course, you mm -hmm. know, if we all play it well and sing it well, and <laughs> the balls don't always drop and so on and so on and so on. So when you say, does it mean this? I go, well, yeah. And if someone after the show says, what did the juggling mean? Does it mean this? And they tell me what they think it means. Yeah. And I go, yes. Yeah. And of course, that it's an open image, mm -hmm. and that's its purpose. Because for you, that's what it means. Not if you're lucky, it's a meaning you're getting in your body and at a deeper level right. than an intellectual idea of does it mean this. So, I think all good theatre does that. And my short period of doing opera, which is just seven or eight years, I have discovered uh, that I didn't know I thought this but I, I now think it there are some things that only opera can do well there you have it folks Phelan McDermott I want to thank him for being on the show I had a great time chatting with him and getting to know him but you know we we got to work with him a lot in rehearsals and uh it's been a singular experience I've never learned how to juggle before in my entire life and uh I had a great time doing it so thank you for being on the show I want to thank LA Opera for co-producing this segment with me. I'm really looking forward to uh, what's to come in this relationship. LA Opera is a home away from home for me. I've been there for 11 seasons, and I love it, so it's a good thing. Anyway, thank you all for listening, and until next time.